Hey, welcome back. This is the Fender Chassis. My name's Scott, and this is uh, day 129 of the uh, new shop project. Um, we're going to change the format of this update, uh, try to make it a little quicker and give you a little better shot of the work that's happening. What I'm going to do is, uh, as I go along and talk about what uh, has been completed, I'm going to um, insert uh, the pictures, uh, still pictures, rather than uh, walking you around and giving you some uh, shaky footage. What's initiating this update is the contractor uh, showed up yesterday to start uh, framing of the, the, new, the new building. Uh, we're currently setting in the, uh, the, the old, uh, old garage that was on the property. And uh, uh, let's start with that and tell you what, uh, what's going on with that. Um, <clears throat> you can probably see in the background the, the walls in here are, um, are, are all white. We did uh, a coat of block filler and then a coat of uh, Sherwin Williams Promar 200 satin in a color called Everyday White. Uh, the block filler, uh, we uh, thought we had enough material to start with that was left over for some previous jobs and um, uh, turned out we didn't. So uh, there was some unmarked material that, that we started with and then there was uh, about three gallons in a, in a, in a, in a five that was um, some commercial grade uh, material that turns out you don't need unless you're going to put epoxy over top of it. And we got down to the end and had everything but this one wall done and had to go get more material. So I bought another five of block filler, but this time we bought just a uh, block filler from the Promar 200 line. And um, it actually, I believe, performed better as far as uh, filling the holes and the cracks and the divots and things of that nature. So if I had to do it all over again, I would have just uh, went and bought a five of that. But uh, it turned out uh, pretty well for what we what we started with. Um, uh, looks pretty nice. Like I say, uh, I'll throw some pictures in here of uh, uh, what that looked like maybe as we were going along. Um, in addition, we painted the soffit of the building. I don't know if I mentioned before, but part of what the contractor that's going to build the new building, part of his scope of work uh, when he comes on site is to uh, put a metal roof on this building. So in preparation for that, uh, we had discussed the possibility of replacing the uh, soffit and fascia on this building just for a better cosmetic appearance. And that and uh, the colors were gonna change. This building was originally white and had white soffit and fascia and gutters and all that. Um, but you know, the stuff was old. I'm sure it was 30 plus years old. And uh, the cost of, um, of, of new material was going to be $700 to $1,000 even if I did the work. So what we did was um, I have a sprayer that uh, I've got an uncle that was a painting contractor and I've got a sprayer that was his and we uh, power washed the whole building and including the soft and the fascia and all that and um, then went back and sprayed the, the soft and fascia brown. Now the building's not painted yet. It's going to be the same color blue as the siding on the new building. Um, but uh, the plan is to uh, tack that in the next um, probably uh, five or six days. And uh, that, this building will be uh, complete uh, cosmetically with the exception of, of uh, the man door. I've got a man door on order. That's one other thing maybe we want to talk about. Um, I have had bad experiences with wooden frame metal doors. And so I did a little more digging rather than buying you know, what's available at like Lowe's Home Depot is in the neighborhood of like 130 bucks, something of that nature. And uh, the problem with that is they don't come bored for a, a deadbolt anymore. And I uh, definitely wanted that. So uh, I, got, I did some digging and what I found was that uh, Lowe's sells a door and I don't know, I don't remember the company that makes it. It wasn't something that was uh, um, obvious to me or something I'd recognized. But they make a, uh, a metal door with a wooden frame that um, has six inches of composite material at the bottom of the frame. And uh, that's, that's the problem that I've had with those kind of doors before. I put three on the old shop and the bottoms of the doors are rotting out. And I even took time to paint the bottoms of the doors so that uh, you know, the, the fibers of the wood act like a straw and suck moisture up in them. And I painted the bottoms of those doors before I installed them, and they're they're still uh, they're, they're they're still rotting. So what I did was, and it cost me uh, a bit more money uh, with a discount that I talked them into, it ended up being about 250 bucks with tax, which is almost double the price for the door. But 
it's a full metal door. There's no wooden core or anything of that nature. So even, you know, it's not just metal on the inside and the outside. It's metal, you know, the, the whole uh, the whole deal. And the framework, even though the frame is, is wood, the bottom six inches is a composite material along with the sill. The sill is also a, uh, a basically it's plastic. And uh, so we'll give that a shot. And I also ordered the door without uh, brick mold because the door on this building, this being a block building, you know, it has uh, eight inch thick walls and they had a standard frame and this door sat to the outside and that therefore the hinges didn't come clear to the inside of the block and this door didn't open all the way. That and the fact that it opens the wrong direction, which we corrected with, with ordering the new, new door. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the door to the inside and like I said, we ordered it without brick mold and then I'm going to go ahead and trim it out um, with, um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's yet, but something will trim it out so the whole door and the facing and everything. And then that way, because the, before the brick mold sat to the outside of the building and they didn't have it flashed and so water would run behind the brick mold and that caused, that caused some problems. And one other thing to note, um, the, the floor where this door where it um, sat is is not uh, is not level, and therefore so the door ended up uh, being a little bit crooked, and I and I went around and around in my mind how to correct that, and one thing that I did because the frame is barely big enough, or the opening is barely big enough for a 36 inch door, and it um, it actually it's kind of like a pyramid. The top's narrower than the bottom, and and so to have room to make some adjustments and do some shimming. I ordered a 34 inch uh, door and frame so there, that, that way I've got a little bit to, um, uh, of room to, to shim it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that sill uh, a minimum of probably a half of an inch off of the floor. Now what that means is that sill is not going to have any support but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy a bag of industrial grout and then we'll build a little dam on the inside, a little dam on the outside, and then we will pour that. Um, we'll we'll pour the underneath of that sill with um, with grout, and that should uh, should provide uh, enough support for that. So <coughs> that uh, um, maybe we'll show a little bit of that installation on the next uh, next update. Um, let's talk about the uh, garage doors. Um, I didn't get a price on replacing the uh, overhead doors in here, although from experience I can tell you for the doors that I would want to put in here we're going to be in a neighborhood of a thousand, twelve hundred dollars. Um, that's not something I'm comfortable spending right now. Um, by, by right now I mean in the next twelve months. So what we decided to do is to try to pass these up as best that we could. So what I did was uh, we took some quarter or uh, three eighths plywood, which is more like five sixteenths, I guess. And the panels that were rotting out that were uh, in danger of you know allowing somebody to, to get into the garage, I uh, I took and and cut uh, that plywood to cover those. And then we used drywall screws to attach them to the doors. And uh, while we did that, we also used uh, polyurethane style glue or Gorilla Glue, you may be familiar with that name, uh, to attach those. So even if somebody were to pull the screws out, they probably wouldn't be able to get the panel off. And then, uh, you know, we had already uh, power washed the doors and uh, we got a coat of paint on those. So, like I say, you're already looking at uh, pictures of that work while I'm talking. So, so that, uh, that got complete. So effectively, the outside of this building. Um, well, let's talk about the uh, the ends of the building. Of course, it's concrete block, but on the ends of the gables, we had T111. On the back side, which is actually the south, the T111 was in terrible, terrible shape. And you know, for the same reason, I didn't want to replace the doors. I didn't want to go into replacing that T111 either. And we talked about some cheap alternatives, like uh, maybe throwing some vinyl siding on it. But the color being blue really wasn't a real good option. Um, and we didn't think it would look right if we put brown, the dark brown color of a vinyl siding on it. So what we decided to do was we power, when we power washed that, we knocked a lot of the loose rotten material off. And then I came back later with a, uh, 
uh, three and a half inch grinder with a 60 grit sanding disc and took sanded it all the way down to a uh, to, to, to sound material now it does not going to look like t111 you know that top surface that's a little bit rough that's all gone and uh, you know there's places where you can see some sanding grooves but you know once it's painted and it's painted blue from the road it's it's uh, it's probably going to look just as good either way and sometime down the road um, you know two or three years from now maybe we'll uh, we'll do something else with that but uh, for now once it's got a coat of paint it'll it'll, uh, it'll it'll look good with all that work being done the only thing left to do to this building on the outside is to go ahead and uh, paint it blue We've got the paint set in here and uh, probably in the next uh, five, six days, uh, that's uh, something that's gonna happen. So, um, what else? Oh yeah, and when we, when we sanded the, uh, the gables, uh, or not only sanded it, the one to the south, but even the one to the north that was in good shape, um, we, I put a coat of um, uh, Kills uh, primer. The pictures you're looking at, they're white. That's the reason. That's the reason they're white. Let's move over to the new building. We got the foundation painted, uh, both inside and out. Um, I bought three gallons of brown that I thought would do the soffit on this building, and uh, one coat on the foundation, the outside foundation of that building. Uh, I ended up coming up short with that three gallons. Uh, we sprayed all that. I bought a, uh, a Graco uh, sprayer. Uh, like I said here, it's an LTS 15. Um, uh, of course, I told you we I had borrowed a sprayer from uh, from my uncle, but we had a little problem with it. it had a pressure sensor that uh, that went bad. It was eighty five dollars, and uh, this brand new sprayer um, I was able to get it for about uh, two sixty, I believe. So we ended up going uh, going that route. And maybe I'll show you on a, on a tool video here sometime soon, um, the, uh, the sprayer. We've still got more to do. But anyway, we, we ended up running short, so we ended up buying uh, more brown, uh, and we bought a five. And that's when we did these doors, and we went back and finished what we didn't, um, what we didn't get the first time around, and then came back and did a whole new coat over, over everything. So there's, uh, I mean, the sprayer puts on more paint than what you could with a roller anyway. So there's two very heavy coats of paint on that foundation. I don't anticipate needing to do anything uh, with that uh, for, uh, for years. Now, I also bought a five of the blue to match the, uh, the outside siding. We're gonna do the foundation on the inside uh, with that. And the idea was that we'd get that, we'd go ahead and get that painted even before they pour the concrete so that when we come back and, and hit it for the second coat, that um, cutting in will be so much easier because the, the, the floor will be poured right up against blue, uh, blue, blue paint. The contractor ended up uh, being delayed. They were actually supposed to be here the beginning of October, so they actually should have been here by the last update that I did. Once again, they didn't show up until yesterday, October 25th. With that time, what I did, initially I wasn't gonna put floor drains in the building. I decided that with the pitch that would have to be put on that floor, that building is 60 foot deep, and with the pitch that would have to be put on that floor to get the water run out the doors uh, on the opposite end, I thought floor drains would be uh, would be prudent. I'll show you pictures of what I did. I put two floor drains in. Uh, one is in the very center of the bay that'll have, that'll be for the truck and the trailer, and then the other is in the center um, for uh, the, the work area of the shop. Contractor. Showed up yesterday sometime between 10 o'clock and noon. I don't know if I mentioned before, part of their scope of work is to do a metal roof on this building. I looked into doing re-shingling it myself. I was gonna have $700 in shingles for 1480 bucks. They put metal roof on it and I never had to touch a thing. I opted to, uh, to go ahead and take them up on that. So yesterday they show up sometime between 10 and noon. By two o'clock, the roof was complete on this building. Part of their scope of work, and it cost me an extra 250 bucks, is uh, new gutters and downspouts. So that's not done yet, as you, you can see from the pictures. It just amazed me that they showed up and they couldn't have had three hours in, 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 in doing this, and they went ahead and moved over to the new building. With the balance of the day, they got the sill plates on. They drilled them and 
put uh, seal seal down and put uh, treated uh, two by eights over the, the whole perimeter of the building. And they left, and I was kind of disappointed they left so early. I talked to the guys, and they actually did have to drive two hours. I said, this is an Amish crew, and I don't know, depending on where you're at in the country, maybe you don't have any experience with Amish people. We don't have a lot in this area, but north of here, two hours in Ohio, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a ton of Amish people. And through Pennsylvania, my experience has been that, that they uh, that they work really hard and, and do very conscientious work. That's all I got for you. Still pictures to be shown. Uh, this video will continue, and if you get a chance, don't forget to hit the like button. And uh, any questions about what uh, what's going on, what I've done, shoot me a comment. I'm going to start putting my email address uh, in the videos as well. If you would uh, rather your comment not be seen, shoot me an email, and. Um, I'll see you uh, on the next update. Thanks for watching.